From the Maricopa Community College campuses to your home, this is Maricopa Now. Here are some of the stories you'll see. Teens get a taste of culinary school at Estrella Mountain Community College. Students train for green careers at Chandler Gilbert Community College's Sun Lake Center. Plus spinning and making music at Scottsdale Community College. And there's so much more on this edition of Maricopa Now. Now from Studio A at Scottsdale Community College, here's your host, Lisa Aquafreda. Welcome to our July show. Thank you for joining us. Each year, college campuses offer a variety of summer programs, such as Kids College. Deanne Kincaid takes us to Culinary Youth Camp at Estrella Mountain Community College. Chop the mushrooms, stir fry the vegetables, and plate the salad. It's day three at the Summer Culinary Youth Camp. And each day starts with a short lecture in the classroom by chef instructor Joe Kalfas. This is an Asian theme today. Um, so all the ingredients, all uh, the flavor profiles, all of the dishes that we do are going to have an Asian uh, component to them. Then it's time to head for the kitchen and get to work. Culinary camp is kind of a product of our society. Food Network and what we see on TV nowadays gets kids more and more excited about this industry, whether it be baking and pastry or whether it be the culinary arts. Like most teenagers, they may be timid at first because they don't know what to expect but they soon get involved. By the second day, third day, and then the fourth day, it's like they're old time friends with one another. Raven Terry will be a high school senior this fall, and she explains what attracted her to culinary camp. I took it because I want to be a professional chef when I grow up, so I figured I can like try and experience it to see if this is what I really want to do. Several high schools have culinary curricula where students take advantage of Maricopa's dual enrollment program, such as culinary arts at Estrella. Students can earn college credit while still attending high school. And then when they finish their high school uh, career, they can come here to Australia Mountain. And if they had a chance to take advantage of the dual enrollment, then they would step into the program with uh, three or six credits under their belt. Or they can simply start the first culinary block class where students learn technique under the watchful eye of Chef Kalfas. And when I say a bias, we want to get rid of the 90 degree angles that you normally see and we want them about an inch long. Um, well, I took this class mainly because uh, my mom told me about it, and it seemed like fun, so I decided to try it. My team was uh, in charge of making wontons and an apricot sauce, and uh, we have to fry them, which I'm doing right now. On Monday, it, we made Italian food, and on Tuesday, we did a barbecue style, and then today we are doing an Asian style, and it's really fun. Today I made shrimp skewers and fried rice. Like all students, Raven gets individual guidance with her menu item. See how quickly that cooks? Yes. Okay, now they're not fully cooked, but we're going to turn them one more time. Now the cooking's over, the eating will begin as the students enjoy the fruits of their labors with the Asian recipes that they've prepared today. After a morning of learning and cooking, these students have worked up an appetite. The best part of my job is I get to see smiling faces and eat good food, so... Um, it was a job well done, and, and the students, as always, they execute a lot higher than uh, they expect that they can. They always exceed their own expectations. And with the dual enrollment options, students also get the best of both worlds. Reporting for Maricopa Now, I'm Deanne Kincaid. For information about kids' college classes, contact the Community Education Office. Chandler Gilbert Community College is committed to sustainability. The campus was recently named a finalist in the Second Nature Climate Leadership Awards. The college also trains students for green careers. Kim Getz takes us to a valley home where students evaluated its energy use. They used what they learned to make sure homes are safe and energy efficient. We have the attic space. These students are learning that every house tells a story, and with the proper training and tools, and we're going to go line by line by line, comes the skill to understand what each one is saying. Whether it's insulation or proper venting, if there's issues with carbon monoxide, any of these things which an audit will tell us is something that uh, it, it takes being certified. It takes going through a class and, and passing and doing field tests such as we're doing here today. Each uh, appliance is different and you would be testing for carbon monoxide. In the the building analyst and envelope shell class offered through the Center for Workforce Development is filling a need 
for energy auditors. Probably not. We do uh, health care positions, we do green jobs, we do whatever we feel as though people can, can get a job in with our short, uh, fast training. In one week, students are trained and tested on how to thoroughly check the systems of a home inside and out to make sure they're all working together. What we're basically doing is just helping them, uh, you know, tightening up their house uh, safety-wise, uh, energy-wise, uh, you know, air quality, uh, you know, things that are, are you know, make this your house safe, right uh, energy efficient, of, uh, comfortable. Tools like this blower door are used to depressurize an entire home, revealing unwanted air leaks and wasted energy. Yeah, lots of air coming out of this. From the big leaks to the little squeaks, they can all add up to throwing money down the drain. But what we look for is the lowest hanging fruit, things that can happen on your house that can save you a lot of energy, bring down your bills without going to extremes. But the audit is about more than just savings. In this home, a simple fix to an incorrect and kinked hose on a gas dryer could be life-saving. It's clogged, so those combustion products are not getting out outside at all. The lint is falling into the house. Lint is very uh, flammable. There's over 15,000 dryer fires a year. For student John Johnson, this new knowledge is building on his career in solar energy. The, the audit is a science, and that's what I've been lacking is the science behind energy efficiency. I believe every home is going to require an audit, just like your automobile requires emissions testing. And these green collar professionals are ready for the job. Well trained people in uh, nationally certified programs so that they can go not only the state of Arizona, but any other state uh, in the union. Reporting for Maricopa Now, I'm Kim Getz. Maricopa County has state energy sector partnership grant money available to businesses and individuals who want to enroll in green energy courses. There's no cost to upgrade your skills in our green world. Call Chandler Gilbert Community College's Workforce Development Office for more information. Coming up on Maricopa Now, it's art in its perfect form at Glendale Community College. That's next. In today's world, layoffs are a fact of life. Stressful? Yes. End of the world? <laughs> no. But with a wife and two kids, I need new skills. Now. Discover yourself at the Maricopa Community Colleges. Maricopa.edu. I teach because I find it very rewarding and exciting to get students interested in science. And many of these students did not know that they would be interested in science. But to see them get passionate about something I am passionate about is, is the way to go. Packers. Viking. Red State. Blue State. We come from different places. Uptown. But Down. when we live united, we create real lasting change in the education, income, and health of our live country. United. Real change won't happen without you. <laughs> so give, advocate, volunteer, live united. Sign up at liveunited.org. What I look for in an instructor is someone who has experience, but also someone who's going to bring some creative you know, peace of mind to the classroom, um, letting the students be able to do their own thing and also being able to be personal with them so we can trust them as an instructor on what they're teaching us. If you have an interest in art, drawing the human figure might be a great way to start. Andrea Zakcheski has the story. The human figure has been a popular subject captured by well-known artists such as Matisse and Degas. This tradition of capturing the figure live is being done by the students from Glendale Community College. The drawing has always been a part of my life and I have a big passion for it. Drawing since I was little. Monica is taking the life drawing class as a way to prepare her portfolio to be accepted to a school studying animation. How it narrows in this top plane I see more of that top plane. Life drawing is a three-hour studio class held twice a week. They look at the human figure and try to understand balance, proportion, anatomy, light and shadow, and how light affects the human form. Sharon Forsmo encourages her students to develop their own style. You know, I don't try to steer them like you have to draw this way, but I use a lot of the academic tradition because it's a good foundation. I chose 
life drawing? Well, because I wanted to learn how to draw the figure better. Sharon Forsmo is great. She's a great hands-on teacher as well. Kevin would like to be an animator, and this course will complement his rendering of the figure. By sketching the life model, students learn how to accurately portray the human figure. When you come into a life drawing class, you have the model there. You know, it's a living, breathing human being. It's three-dimensional. The model does a series of poses for the students to get real-life portrayals of motion. You need to be aware of what makes an interesting pose. I like being part of the process. Without a model up here, they're not learning. Instructors say if you learn how to draw the figure well, you can paint commission portraits as a career. Portrait artists, if they're really, really good, can command pretty good prices. In order to command those kind of prices, you have to build your reputation. The students are taught how to develop a portfolio of works and how to market themselves. I've talked to students a lot about um, shows and uh, getting their work out there, presentation. Glendale Community College has student art in exhibitions on campus and their art is often featured in campus publications. Students also feature their work on Glendale Community College's website. The long tradition of painting the figure lives on. For Maricopa Now, I'm Andrea Zakszewski. Congratulations to GCC art student Monica Ekaboot. She was recently accepted to the California Institute of Art, also known as Cal Arts. It was ranked the number one art school in the country last year by Newsweek magazine. Get connected with your future by watching Enfoque en tu Futuro. You'll meet remarkable people who make a difference. Find now about curriculum that reaches out across international borders. Enfoque en tu Futuro is about people, places, and a story that have an impact on the Maricopa College District. Tune in to Enfoque en tu Futuro only on MCTV, Cox Cable Channel 115. For times, go to our website at maricopa.edu slash MCTV. I'm Cookie. Today we're going to talk a little bit about some ways that we can help you reduce some stress. There are a lot of great ways to reduce stress and one of those is through meditation. Many forms of meditation. Most of us think of meditation in a seated position. Today we're going to do moving meditation. It might be more appropriate for those of you that are a little bit more A-type personality. We're going to do an easy basic warm-up with some Tai Chi and Qigong movement. What I want you to do is set your feet about hip width apart, bring your hands into heart center, and create your intention for this just gentle workout. We're gonna allow the head to bow. We say namaste. With an inhale, eyes come open, arms float down. We're gonna gather the chi. The inhale as the arms come up and over the top. And as you pull the energy down, you're gonna soften the knees. Inhale, let's do two more. As the arms come up and over your head, exhale as you soften. Last time, inhale as the arms come up and over your head, relaxing all of the facial muscles, your mouth and your jawline. The next one is called opening the energy gates of the heart. We float it open and expand through the chest. On your exhale, we're gonna imagine that we're hugging this giant tree. Inhale as you open and expand again. Exhale as you contract. We're gonna do that one more time. Inhale as you open and expand. Exhale as you contract. With an inhale, the arms will float down going into painting with light. Float the arms, just relax everything. Fingertips will face forward. Inhale as you float the arms up again. Exhale as you soften everything. We're gonna do this one more time, inhaling. Exhaling, relax the arms down, going into pearl in the hand. I want you to float that right arm up and open, bringing that arm back across. You're gonna take it up and over your head, make a big circle. Reach back behind your back. Float the arms forward. We're gonna repeat this by putting the pearl into the opposite hand. That arm comes across. Inhale, exhale as it goes up and over the top. Release, we're gonna add both arms together. Inhale as you cross the arms. Exhale, open, expand up and over your head. Just keep the breath soft. When the arms come in, we're gonna imagine that we're bringing the energy into the heart, pressing down. With an inhale, let's take it into some gentle circles of the shoulders. One more time. Reverse that direction. Wonderful. Let's go ahead and bring those arms back to your hips 
and then soften the knees as you take it into some gentle hip circles. Opening up the hips, the hips, the knees, the ankles. And now let's reverse that motion. Coming back to a centered position, bringing your body nice. Inhale, bring the chi back one more time. Draw down with the abdominal wall as the energy comes down. We're gonna circle up and over the top. Bringing the hands into Namaskara. Coming up nice and tall. We bow from the hip sockets and we say namaste. I'm Cookie and that's your fit tip for today. Get into the game with Inside Maricopa Sports. From the gridiron to track and field, the ninth inning to the winning goal, Inside Maricopa Sports brings you the excitement of Maricopa College's sports. Get up close and personal with athletes and coaches. Plus, meet the unsung heroes of the game. Join us on the field and behind the scenes on Inside Maricopa Sports, only on MCTV, Cox Cable, Channel 115. From the kitchen of Australia Mountain Community College to your kitchen, here's Chef's Menu. So today we're going to make a roasted red pepper salad. And what I'm going to start with is some red and yellow peppers. And I've tossed this in a little bit of olive oil using some tongs. And this is the first thing that we're going to do. This takes a while to roast the pepper. We're going to place it on a grill and let it roast nice and slow. All right, so our peppers are on the grill right now. So I'm going to take some pine nuts, place them onto a sheet pan, and I'm going to toast these off in a 300 degree oven until I can smell some of the aromas, the nutty aroma from these pine nuts. It takes about 10 minutes. The next thing we're going to do is mince some garlic. So I've got a whole fresh clove right here, and I'm going to take a couple pieces off. And I want to get it out of the skin. One of the easiest ways is just to take your knife and tap it and really pulverize it. Once I get it nice and small, I'm gonna come back with a knife again and smear it. And that gives us more of a garlic paste. That's really just gonna melt into that salad versus someone getting a big chunk of garlic. Next is chopped parsley. The key to, to chopping quickly is to hold the knife like you see right here. I'm not holding it back here, I'm holding it right up front towards the hosel and I'm gonna keep my other hand on top of the blade. And my knife, the tip here is never leaving the board. I'm not doing this, um, just rocking. So our peppers have roasted off on the grill. We wrap them in a bowl with some saran wrap and that allows the pepper to steam within its own heat and that helps release the charcoal skin away from the flesh of the pepper. So it's been about a half an hour and I'm gonna start cleaning these. One of the things you don't want to do is just run this under the sink because there's a lot of flavor from that roasting. And I'm just going to take a bowl of water with some gloved hands and start peeling the pepper. Okay. I'm getting the skin off but it's sticking to my hands and I don't want that on the pepper so I'm just going to dip my hands in water, get them dry again, and keep peeling. Okay, so I've cleaned off most of the skin. And now I want to take the core out. So I'm just going to pop the top right here, remove that core, remove the seeds. And then just open up that pepper, like so. And then we want to get this pe these peppers dry, dried up a little bit. So I'm just going to pat them off on a clean towel. The next thing we're going to do is cut these into julienne strips. Julienne is approximately 1 8 inch strips. We also call them matchsticks. I'm going to come in with a knife, once again holding it properly. I'm just going to cut nice fine strips. Once again, the tip of my knife is staying on the cutting board. I'm not doing this. Up and down. I'm also using the claw. Notice my hand is staying away from the knife, like so so that I don't cut myself. So we're gonna do this with all the peppers, the red peppers as well as the yellow, and I'm gonna gather the rest of my ingredients for this. So the first thing I'll do is take the minced garlic, add it to a bowl, add some olive oil, about a quarter cup, some parsley, some salt and pepper. I'm just gonna whisk that together. 
I'm gonna add the peppers. The raisins. Season it one last time. So it's best to let this sit for at least an hour before you serve it. So it's time to plate up the salad into a room temperature bowl. I'm gonna place some nice crispy leaves of Boston Bib lettuce. And add some marinated peppers. And then garnish this with some feta cheese. Add some pine nuts. A little bit of cracked pepper. And just a drizzle of olive oil around the outside edges. Are. Chef's Menu is brought to you by the Culinary Studies Program at Estrella Mountain Community College. For today's recipe, please visit this address. Whether students need help choosing a major, writing a resume, or preparing for an interview, every campus career services centers can help. Deanne Kincaid takes us to Mesa Community College's Federal Work Study Job Fair, where students are finding jobs right on campus. Eager students arrive early to be first in line as the doors open at the Federal Work Study Job Fair. Michael Williams is a junior who will soon earn his associates in psychology. I'm here to apply for jobs and go to the job fair that was on campus. So um, I got applied for financial aid and I'm looking for a job opportunity. The Work Study Job Fair is an opportunity for students who are on financial aid and have been awarded a Work Study Award to come to one location today to find a job opening and actually some of them are going to get hired right on the spot. Maricopa Colleges support this effort because it puts students in touch with jobs on campus. And one student who is currently working on campus explains why it's so valuable. It provides me with a financial base pay so I don't have to go out and find another job that I would have to rework my school schedule around. Many students see an additional advantage to the fair. I want to get more experience. Uh, for my job, like from, from the job, is good for my future. And this job fair makes finding a position on campus very efficient. To get the word out, signs are put up in financial aid and the career center. To complete the picture, social media was used. I also used Facebook. Um, a lot of our students are on Facebook, so I posted on our Career Services Facebook page. Currently, the work study job offerings have gotten competitive there are more people looking for a job than there are openings. Emails are sent out to eligible students advising them to dress appropriately and prepare a resume. Students need to dress for success and bring their resume with them if they're serious about getting a job on campus. It's not just a, just a job on campus anymore, it's a real job. Computer, phone and filing skills are needed for most campus jobs. A student assistant in my area is usually the first contact that people have when they come to my department. So that's very important that the customer service skills are up to par. Not all jobs are indoors. MCC is unique in that it has a famous rose garden, which provides an opportunity to work outdoors. We're looking for someone that has experience pulling weeds, fertilizing, watering, that can lift heavy objects, that knows how to operate heavy machinery. Over 13 departments attended the job fair today with work-study options for students. Additional opportunities are available year-round on the Career Services website. Those students who have participated in this program recommend it to their fellow students. I think the best thing about the Federal Work-Study Program is gaining job experience in an environment that is conducive to my learning on campus. And those departments where the students work fully appreciate their mission. We, the employers, have a duty as well, and that is to prepare the students when they leave us so that they can go out in the workforce and utilize the skills that we too have been able to offer them. Reporting for Maricopa Now, I'm Deanne Kincaid.
The next Federal Work Study Job Fair is July 18th from 10 to 12.30 in the library. If you can't attend or you missed it, contact Career and Reentry Services for information about other on-campus job opportunities. Scottsdale Community College is the first college in the country to offer accredited DJ classes. Ruben Veloz tells us more about these unique classes. They can scratch, juggle, and transform. These are the techniques the, DJ the students mask, are learning. This guy, though, is no amateur. Ramsey Higgins is the instructor at Scottsdale Community College's Turntablism class, a program designed for students who want to learn the ones and twos of scratching. Some of them are wanting to know the background of this. Some of them want to actually better their career. Some of them want to take up a career with this. Julian is used to playing music in front of crowds, but he wanted to do more than just push buttons. I was DJing up in San Diego um, for a couple years, but I've never touched turntables, uh, actual like vinyl turntables until I came here. Now do it. Once students are enrolled, they learn techniques such as bouncing and are even taught the history and physics of turntablism. Like the transformer is when you're like... Amy Hartman has been scratching on turntables for just a short time and noticed a major difference in her performance. I went in here knowing absolutely nothing and I came out like being able to do scratches, juggles, threading, chirps, flares, all of that just in one semester. The, the main thing I love about this is the progression of each student and how they learn. I'm not here for, for perfection. I don't want to see per perfection right now. I want to see progression. Many working DJs also sign up for these classes in order to improve their skills. Dario Varela, a DJ at 95.1 Latino Vibe, was one of them. My ultimate goal in life is to go to Vegas and DJ Vegas, have a residency out in Vegas. I had always seen an attraction for DJing, um, just because my cousin used to do it, and I always used to see it at the clubs or whatever. And um, I was like, I'm just going to buy me some equipment and see how it goes from there. Although being a DJ may seem like fun and games, Varela says there's a lot more than meets the eye. There's so much work behind the actual entertainment part of it as a DJ that a lot of people don't see. So it's a lot of work, it's a lot of work. But honestly, like, the, getting the opportunity to entertain people and really see a reaction out of them, like, that's it's priceless. Uh, just hold your fader open in the middle for open speaker. Okay, now find your sound. DJ entertainment has become such a big business that instructors at Scottsdale are working to introduce the first DJ certificate accredited by a college. The DJs in Chicago are known for house music. The DJs in, in New York are known for hip hop. The DJs in, in Detroit are known for techno. And with the cooperation of the DJ community here in the Valley, we're going to be known for DJ education. For DJs like Varela, the possibility of Arizona being known for DJ education is exciting. Who can say that they get to go to a club, a uh, radio station, entertain hundreds of people, I mean thousands of people here on the radio, and get paid for it, you know? So if someone tells you that music entertainment isn't a career choice, just ask these guys, and they'll tell you differently. Reporting for Maricopa Now, Ruben Veloz. Classes are offered at Scottsdale, Mesa, and South Mountain Community College. For more information, contact DJ Rob Wagner. And that's our show. I hope you've enjoyed it. Be sure to stay tuned to MCTV for a great lineup of shows, including Inside Maricopa Sports and 180 View. Also check out our website at maricopa.edu slash mctv and click on DestTube. DestTube allows you to watch this show and all of our regularly produced programs anytime you wish. Until next time, take care. Don't touch that remote. MCTV has more great programming coming right up. Join MCTV every day for Inside Maricopa Sports in Foque and Tufaturo and our daily community calendar update in the district.